All right. Hello, everybody. Um, officially, welcome to all of you uh, to this workshop or online workshop on the WordPress project. So as I was sharing here in this call earlier, there was there, there have been several workshops on WordPress, interaction to WordPress and you know different things about WordPress. But we've not had a ton of sessions on the project itself. So in this in this short one hour session, which I hope to end in 30 to 45 minutes, so giving you 15 minutes of your time back, I hope to share about the project in general, about the WordPress project in general, so that you get an idea of the project. And here's a space. We have some veteran contributors here. We have some uh, fairly new contributors here. And this session is being held as part of the experimental contributor mentorship program. We have a few mentees, but it's open to all. So we have folks from all over the world here. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to share my screen so that we can uh, quickly start the session. Just a second. I'm going to, I'm going to need a minute to do that. All right, folks. Can you see my screen? Excellent. So I'm going to quickly enter the slideshow mode. All right. So, um, uh, all right. So, welcome once again to the session. Um, we're going to talk about four main things here today. So, first, I'm going to briefly introduce you to the to the project. So, you all know what WordPress is. Um, before I go ahead, I, I want to make sure that you know what WordPress is. Does anybody can anybody tell me like what is WordPress? You can just unmute and just share. What is WordPress? Anyone? It's an online open source project. Uh, it is a CMS, which is a content management system, and it just helps people in general uh, do content better through a blogging platform or just web design. That is an excellent answer. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Anatoly, go ahead. Uh, WordPress, it's what, what you touch every day. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so different explanations, but I think the short answer is WordPress is a content management system. It's an open source content management system. It is built by, uh, it's, it's an open source project. And Rico here tells us that it's the largest open source project in the world. I don't know if it's the largest, but it's definitely the most popular content management system. It's it's definitely a big open source project, no two ways about it. So so today we're gonna, we're not gonna talk about, so we've, we've, most of us know how to, at least the folks here, many of you, I'm assuming that you know how to use the software. Today we are looking, trying to look, take a look at the project behind it. What, how does this, how, how, how do you build this uh, project? So we take a look at that broadly. Um, then we look into the different sub projects within this project. So there's a bunch of sub projects that's being happened that that's, that's over there. I'm going to give you all a very brief, very quick overview of the different sub projects that make this huge thing that is WordPress. Thirdly, we will take a very, very quick overview of how WordPress is built. And finally, uh, I'm going to share a bit of a case study of how a feature gets added into code. So there's a feature, if you use WordPress now, in 2020, we got this feature called XML sitemaps. So my SEO friends in this call will know what I'm talking about. Sitemap is an, it's a very cool feature which collects all the links of the site. It's extremely good for SEO. WordPress has it like built in, in core uh, as of 2020. I think I believe the came in word version 5.5. So we we'll see, we we'll see a case study of how a new feature gets added into WordPress as an example to see how you know a new feature gets or how like WordPress gets new features. All right. So without further ado, let's begin. So I'm going to quickly introduce you to the open source project before and, and to do that, I must share this blog post. Um, Pooja, if you can share the link in chat, that would be great. So this blog post is uh, written by a guy called Matthew Charles Mullenberg, the co-founder of WordPress. He wrote this on July 24, 2003. Uh, it's a very interesting post. Um, so this is actually how WordPress was born. So he was using a CMS called B2 Cafe Log. He was very frustrated by it. So he brought out a post saying, hey, this is this does not work. I want somebody to help me fix this. Can somebody help me fix this? He brought a post like this. And this guy, his name is Mike Little. So Matt, Matthew Charles Mullenberg or Matt Mullenberg, he's from the US. He lives in Houston, Texas. Still based out of there, more or less. This guy, uh, Mike, he's from the UK. Mike Little, his name is Mike Little. So he commented on the post saying, hey, if you're serious about forking this, I'm happy to help. Do you know what happened next? WordPress was born. So this is exactly 20 years back. So 20 years later, we have WordPress now, which powers 40% of the internet. Of the, internet. the reason why I shared this is, so you, you saw how WordPress was born out of a blog post and a comment, right? So this, very interestingly, 20 years later, this is more or less how our project works. Like, there's a bunch of people from all over the world. We communicate together. 
in in common platforms and we work together to build this open source software so i wanted to start with this post because it feels very poetic to start with the very post that created wordpress all right so let's take a look at uh, wordpress itself the first thing that i want to introduce you to is of course wordpress.org wordpress.org is the website where wordpress lives that's that's so when you refer to the wordpress project you refer to wordpress.org um i'm not going to go into the what, .com versus .org confusion but i will briefly share that wordpress.com is not what we are going to talk about today that's an entirely different um product that's created by a company called automatic incorporated it's a web hosting company it so happens that automatic had this contact automatic is the was the uh, automatic is the company where matt mullenberg was the ceo so they owned the uh, they owned the copyright of wordpress until uh, 2010 when it was transferred over to the wordpress foundation so um automatic still owns the domain wordpress.com but still today wordpress wordpress.org belongs to the community it is built by a global community of hundreds of thousands of people who build this so this website wordpress.org that is where the project lies and that's where we're going to start our journey today so you can see that this site has a bunch of links this this news this download this learn this community so i'm going to walk you through the different parts of the site which is exactly what our project is so when we refer to the wordpress project we refer to wordpress.org so let's start taking a deeper look at wordpress.org to see what what's all available in the site i'm i'm sure if you use wordpress you've seen this this subsite called wordpress.org/themes you know what a wordpress theme is because we are not going to learn wordpress today i'm sure you know this but yes we wordpress has a theme directory and it is being maintained by a make wordpress themes team we have around 11000 themes is a very integral part of wordpress.org again it's built by the community much like wordpress itself so uh it's it's a very active part of the site and we have a lot of block themes here blocks are the new paradigm in wordpress so when we thought when when i refer to themes i should definitely talk about plugins as well as you all know plugins extend the functionality of wordpress we have around 60000 plugins so wordpress dot themes and plugins both these projects are integral parts of wordpress so or when when we, when we refer to the wordpress projects it's it's not just the wordpress.org website from where you can download wordpress there's this link handy link on the top called download and you click on it you can download it but that's not just wordpress we have themes we have plugins and we have patterns so patterns is something that it's it's a fairly new paradigm that came into wordpress i believe in the 20 in 2020 2021 uh, when blocks came in so block patterns are essentially a group of blocks so you can actually create a design like maybe like a testimonial page or um or maybe even like a um i don't know like a v card so it, you, it's a, it's a collection of blocks which is available in the directory so let's say you're building a site and you want to add maybe a testimonial section or a, um i don't know a hero section you can just copy one of these like you can take go to, take a look at this section you can copy one of these and add it here so again this is also part of what is our talk so again to repeat we have themes we have plugins we have patterns all these are part of the wordpress project so it's not we're not just talking about the open source software that we download from wordpress at all we have a bunch of things over here as well we've taken a look at three of them moving on we have wordpress mobile apps um how many folks here use the word have you how many folks here use the wordpress mobile app can i see a show of hands anyone do you use the wordpress mobile app yeah. i see one hand even i i raise my hand too. I, i think i raised i saw two hands so yeah So the WordPress mobile app, no points for guessing. It's also built by the community. Okay, one more thing that I forgot to share. So all these things that you saw earlier, these are not built by a company. These are not built by an individual. They are built by the community. Similarly, WordPress mobile apps are also built by the community. Um, so yes, you can use this to actually manage your WordPress website. So again, it's an integral part of WordPress. WordPress has a hosting page. So WordPress recommends some hosting providers. There's a hosting page which which lists. some hosts which work closely with wordpress it's it's not really a part of it but it's 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 a place it's a it's a page of this website which lists some hosts so it's it's not really relevant to our discussion but but i just want to share that this page exists now this site openwords.org you at a first glance it may uh, it may not seem very familiar but i don't know if you can see my slides but on the bottom right of this you will see a small section that says part of the wordpress project I'll explain. So this site, openwords.org, it was previously known as Creative Commons Search. So Creative Commons was a website. It's a it's a it's a program or it's an initiative 
which licenses artwork. Like there's a Creative Commons license, which means that it allows people to freely use, um, you know, software. So uh, not not software. What I'm what I'm talking about, like art. Um, but when I say art, it's talk, it's about uh, pictures, it's about audio, video. So you can actually license your art with different ways. Uh, it's very similar to the GPL. You can call it the um, the I don't know the art equivalent of the GPL, like a free a, a license that allows artwork to be distributed in a free way. Not not necessarily free, like in a licensable way. So Creative Commons, the search part of it, WordPress, the uh, the search part of Creative Commons joined the WordPress project in 2020. And we rebranded that to Openverse. So we have this, this website called openverse.org. It's now a part of WordPress.org. So it's a search engine which searches through around 700 million creative works all over the world. I'm going to share an exciting news with you. This is going to come into WordPress. So there's a team actually working on it. And again, this is not owned by a company. This is basically done by the community. So there's a community of folks who are working on it. So this is going to be a part of WordPress core at some point. Imagine like when you, so if you know WordPress, you can, you, you know, you have to actually download a folder to actually add it, right? What if you could directly search the internet from your WordPress dashboard? You can search images and directly add it there. This is coming to core at some point. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. So this is an exciting project which tries to make that happen. And again, the images that you add using the site are completely licensable, they're completely open. That's the beauty of it. Now, this is an interesting site, which if you're interested, I'd like you all to follow. WordPress.org slash news. If you want to know what's happening with WordPress, this is the site you need to follow. All the updates of, about WordPress. So the latest post in the site is about the about the six point, um, I can actually show it to you, like the, the, the 6.3 beta 4 release. It has all the information, all the updates. So you can actually, you know, sign up on the site. You can actually sign up for updates. So if you're interested, I would strongly recommend that you do that. It's a great way to stay updated on where WordPress is headed. So it's, an, it's, a, it's a very interesting site. If you want to follow along the updates of WordPress, this is where you should take a look at. Now, I want to quickly talk about Learn WordPress. I'm, I'm, I might probably ask Pooja to share a bit more. So Learn WordPress, I mean, especially if you're new, I know some of you are fairly new to WordPress or you would like to learn WordPress. This is a resource that I would recommend you all to look at. Some of you, especially folks in our mentorship group, you may have already gone through some courses here. This is a this is a new initiative that it's been part of WordPress for a while, but we the community started actively working on it in 2020. And my colleague Pooja over here, she's been she's been working on it. She's she's literally the, the representative of the Make WordPress training team, which works on Learn WordPress. So they have a bunch of learning materials, they have tutorials, they have lesson plans, they have courses, and they're adding more and more content over there. So and some of them is like really interesting. It's it's coming from the best WordPress peeps in the world. And you know what the best part is? It's completely free. So Pooja, do you want to maybe share something about Learn WordPress? Yes. Uh, anything more other than what I've shared? Maybe. Yes. Just Actually, you can get Learn Word content in your local language. And if you want to contribute to translate the content in your language, you can do so. So it will be helpful to others who in your lang uh, in your country in your region to uh, understand and learn from, about the wordpress from the learn content so yes you can find content in your language and in the um, everything uh, is available on learn wordpress website what you want to learn yes, yes. exactly that so to summarize, there's a bunch of exciting content, and this is not just in English. You're trying to add content in different languages. So if you speak German, you have, I mean, I'm not sure of the number of German content over there, but like we, at some point, will have uh, content in as many languages as possible. So that's where the site is headed. So keep an eye out on learn.wordpress.org. Moving on, um, I want to quickly introduce you to the WordPress documentation site. So it's a very, uh, very powerful site. So, so, the learn WordPress website has courses, but where do you where do you look where do you look for documentation? Documentation is different from learning, right? So maybe you want to look up a specific function, like if you're a developer, or maybe you want to learn more about a feature. So you've you've just found out about a new feature that came in with WordPress, and you'd like to know more about it. So this is where the WordPress.org slash documentation page comes in. Just go here and search for whatever you want. 
it will return information on, on what you want. So there's an active doc scheme working on keeping this updated. So this documentation, it has both developer documentation and user documentation. There's a bunch of exciting things happening here. So keep an eye out on the documentation site for everything that you need. And everything that I shared about right now, it's not made by a company, it's made by the community. So it's like folks like you and I, we, we work on this, on all these projects. Moving on, I'm sure you all asked WordPress help at some point. So for you, I'd like to dedicate the WordPress.org slash support site. This is where, this is the official WordPress support forum. So it links to documentation, which we just saw. Uh, additionally, it also has a bunch of forums like this one, where you can ask questions. So there's a bunch of different types of forums. You may not be able to see this in my screenshot, but there's a bunch of different forums where you can get answers to different types of questions. So if you are looking for answers to your WordPress questions, this is where you should go. It's the WordPress support forums. Now, WordPress is, an, is a very powerful tool for developers as well. If you are a developer who wants to get better at what you do, I would recommend that you take an eye out. Look, take a look at developer.wordpress.org. So especially if you're building something for using WordPress, there's a bunch of things that you need to follow. This is the site where all those information is kept. We have the code reference. So WordPress has very strict coding standards. It's over here. So if you're building themes or plugins or blocks, there's different things that you need to keep in mind. All of these live here. While we are talking about the developer sites, I also want to quickly talk about this very exciting initiative called the developer.wordpress.org slash news. It's, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so this is a new blog that this, the team working on this site has made. So if you follow this, like these people come up with so many excellent posts on, especially on the latest happenings of WordPress. So if you want to follow uh, what's happening in, in the world of uh, WordPress development, this is the site that you need to head to. And I would recommend that you uh, subscribe to it. I'm gonna quickly show you the site because I think it's very powerful. I think you all need to take a look at it as well. So yeah, this is the site. And uh, yeah, you can you can definitely subscribe to it. It has a bunch of exciting content, exciting learning content over here. And it's mainly aimed at developers. So if you're a developer or if you're trying to learn development, if you wanna keep up, and I know WordPress is changing at this point because WordPress of 2017 or 2016 is not the WordPress of 2023. We have blocks now. We, uh, the, the theme paradigm has changed. There's so much of changes. So if you want to keep up with that, this is the site. This is the blog that you need to follow. Um, I want to quickly share this tool with you all. Um, before I do that, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. Have you heard of this uh, tool, the WordPress Playground? Anyone? Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. It looks like something happened. Uh, the our screen share broke. <laughs> sorry yeah. to interrupt you, but your screen sharing is stopped. Yes, I I just saw the I just saw the sound set. Let's let's go back. When when was the last uh, place where you were able to see my screen? Actually, we I never I we never seen the your screen. I think. Ah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to quickly, I don't know what happened. Like, I think this, there's some weird things going on with Zoom. It's okay. I'm going to, I'm going to you know, try quickly. Right. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Okay. Finally. <laughs> Thank you for raising this. Okay. So um, I want to share something which Matt Mullenweg keeps talking about mostly. It's like, if you see something, say something. And this definitely applies in WordPress as well. Thank you, uh, thank you, Rico, for pointing it out, and thank you, Pooja, for sharing it. So if you see a bug, report it. If you see a problem, like say it out loud. I mean, I actually want to thank you for saying this because um, uh, if you had not seen said this, I would have not told this as well. But I'm going to quickly walk you through everything that I just spoke of. So this is WordPress.org, the main site, and this is the theme site that he spoke of. WordPress.org such themes. This is the plugins site, uh, what was dot org slash plugins. Pooja has been sharing links. So you already have some idea. And this is the pattern site. We spoke of block patterns. This is the site where we, you know, uh, talk a lot about patterns. The WordPress mobile apps page, this is where you get access to WordPress mobile apps. Hosting. So WordPress has a couple of recommended hosting providers, which I referred to earlier. This is where you can learn about them. Openverse.org, I spoke a bit about this. So this is the tool uh, which you can use to um, you know, get access to different creative works and things like that. It's a, it's a search engine for WordPress, which is which is just part of Creative Commons, but it is joined the WordPress project now. 
This is the wordpress.org slash news site. Uh, I want to quickly show you that the link. Uh, so this is, a, this is the wordpress.org slash news site. Please follow it for all the latest updates. I believe Pooja shared the link. It's, it's an exciting site. Um, so I would recommend all of you to follow that. Uh, learn.wordpress.org. Pooja did a great job explaining what learn.wordpress.org is. Uh, so it's, a, it's an excellent site, which is a bunch of content. So I believe some of, some of the folks here in this session, they've already pursued this website. So it's a, it's a great website. So you can actually use it. There's a bunch of amazing learning content. So if you're learning WordPress, it's completely free. It's a great opportunity for all of you to learn. We have the WordPress documentation. So this is this is where all the technical and non-technical documentation of WordPress lives. So you can actually use this for following content. We have the support forums, which I touched upon briefly. So this is where you can ask for help. And you can also give help. And uh, there are fo there's a forum for different types of topics. So what you can see on the screen is a fixing WordPress forum. We have a developer resources site, which I quickly touched upon, developer.wordpress.org. It's the site um, where you can actually get help. We not get help, like it has the different developer resources. So if you're a developer, if you want to like really follow certain standards or working on things, this is the site that you can take a look at. We have the developer blog, which I touched upon. So, so if, if, you're, if you're learning development or if you're following development, it's a great site. Uh, so this blog, they, the the folks working on it, they keep adding a bunch of exciting content. If you want to follow development, this is the, this is the resource uh, that you want to look at. And okay, we were, we were talking about this when I actually realized that my slides were not being shared. But again, thank you so much, Rico. Thank you, Pooja. Thank you, everybody, for actually showing, sharing about it. And uh, I will say this again. If you see something, say something. I mean, uh, Sheila, I would know you are based in the US. It's a very common thing uh, that you, I mean, when, whenever I've traveled to the US, I've seen folks say this. Like, if you see something, say something. It's said in a different context, but in open source, it's it's a very good paradigm. If something is broken, just report it. It gets fixed. So, like, I think we've, uh, <laughs> in a very poetic way, we learned an open source lesson here. So, again, anyway, coming back. So, who, who here has heard about the WordPress Playground? Anyone? Yeah, I, I know. Yes, thanks, Sumit. So, um, do you want to quickly talk about it, Sumit? You, you, you've used it, I'm guessing. So, actually, playground is you know is every kind you know. It was previously you know we need to set up the WordPress and then is we need to hosting or set up the local host. But you know after come the playground, anybody can come on the direct this URL and you know test the any of the a small block code or something like. In two minutes, he can test the everything on the playgrounds. Let's exactly, talk. exactly. So, uh, so Sumit, you summed it up really well. So to explain, this is, this is a very new project. This was actually released last year. It's, it's an official WordPress project. So previously, if you wanted to test something out, like if you run, I mean, if you, if you have to run WordPress, you need, you need a server or you need a tool like local by flywheel or uh, WAMP or XAMPP, et cetera. Like you need to actually yeah. install a local development tool. But right now, the WordPress core team They've actually built this tool, which actually runs WordPress in the browser. So you do not need to install anything. You don't need to install a server. You don't need to install a local development tool. You can actually go to this link, uh, which I believe is uh, playground.wordpress.net. Um, I'm going yes. to quickly share that in chat. Um, playground.wordpress.net. So whoever he is, is here, like if you want to try it out, they just follow that link. I'm going to show it live in this call, like as a compensation for <laughs> not sharing my screen. So, all right. So let's, let's take a look at it. So I've, I've just clicked on that. Like I'm not doing anything. So it says preparing WordPress. Let's see how this one, how it's going to happen. It so happens that whenever I test it, sometimes it doesn't work. Maybe I'm on a slow connection, but let's see. So what this actually does is it, it actually, you know, creates uh, a, a test site for us in the backend. It is painfully slow. Usually it's faster. Probably because of my internet connection. Anyway, let it load for a bit, but I think you got, got the idea. Like, if you want to play around with it, just share the link and uh, follow the link that I've shared in chat, playground.wordpress.net. So if you visit there, it, it creates a, a, a WordPress site in the dashboard in the browser without having to install anything. So as it loads, let's go back to our slides. Maybe we'll come back and see. Hopefully by then it will have loaded. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So coming back. So this is a very cool tool. If you want to, if you want to test different things. So especially, so do you know why, why this is relevant? So this is especially relevant if you're contributing to WordPress. 
you want to test something like a, a patch or something, it's a very cool tool because it runs in the background, it's run, it runs in the browser. You can directly use it to test things. So it's a very cool tool. Please play around with it. Okay, so this is a very interesting site, WordPress.tv. It's also part of the uh, part of our ecosystem. Um, the beauty of WordPress.tv is it has a bunch of exciting sessions on different topics. So we have WordCamps and WordPress meetups held all around the world, right? So sessions from these, they get recorded here. Additionally, we just saw Learn WordPress. Learn WordPress is a bunch of exciting online content, all that gets stored here. So if you want to follow, you know, the latest, I mean, uh, if you want, if you're, if you're interested in like, video lessons on WordPress, this is the site you should go. I mean, just search for it. Um, it has like several terabytes of video content. So like uh, basically any WordPress content that you're looking for, that's probably, it's probably here. So it's, this is a bunch of, it's, it's a great repository of content. And it's not, not just from WordCamps or meetups. It's from like, it has instructional, you know, learning content. And in fact, like this video will go there, go there to learn WordPress. That's, that's where it's headed. Sorry, not learn WordPress, to WordPress.tv. And hopefully someday in learn WordPress as well, because it's an online workshop. So yeah. Oh, Playground had a hiccup. <laughs> let me, I, let I, me. I, I can I can share if you need. I yes, can... uh Sumit, I'm gonna quickly make you co-host. Uh yeah, do you want I'm gonna I'm gonna end my screen sharing for a second, just a second. Uh I will need to do that so that you can share. Oh, I I can okay. I am able to share the screen. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Sumit. So let me know when you can see it. Everyone. Yes. Yes, yeah. we can see. It. Yes. So can you so quickly show it the, around? Yes, this is the playground. And here, you know, this, here is the main things. You can, you know, without set up any of the local server, you can test the different, different type of the version of the PHP and also WordPress. So this is very good, you know, without setting anything, you can test the your develop plugin theme instantly on here with different, different version of the PHP and WordPress, go to the dashboard. This is temporary. So if you, you know, reload the anything, then you can lose the option, three option, permanent uh, store the browser history, just temporary. So make sure what you are done and apply, then you can change everything on backend. So right now working fine. I think some issue was the loading. But yeah, it, it actually loaded for me now. <laughs> yeah, so but right now, sure. yeah, yes, yeah. working fine now. So there is the all option. There is not, you, you can't able to install the WordPress repository plugin, but you can upload your own developed plugin theme, everything here. So this is the playground. And, you know, if anybody beginner or, you know, something blocked, you can quickly test anything on there. Yes. Without any setup, so this is a very helpful for the beginner, at least that this platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly that. So, folks, uh, I think I believe the link is already shared in chat. Playground.wordpress.net. Um, yeah. Just a second, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. Playground.wordpress.net. All right, so I'll share it again. So feel free to try it out. It's a, it's a cool tool. So as you uh, folks who are doing the mentorship program, if you go through it. Uh, I mean, it will be very helpful as you work uh, w with the group. Uh, but uh, even, even otherwise, it's a cool tool to test things out as well. All right, Sumit, I'm going to quickly stop, stop your sharing so that I can... Yes, uh, sure. But sure. thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciate it. And as you can see, the playground does work for me now. <laughs> I had to match. I had to just stop the screen sharing for that to work. <laughs> yeah, hey, it work, works for me now. Yeah, I guess I jinxed it. But yeah, anyway, coming back to my slides. Uh, so we spoke of WordPress.tv. It's an excellent resource. Uh, do take a look at it. I want to quickly talk about this side as well. Um, so we, we, I'm just going to go back a quick few slides. I should have actually, yeah, we spoke of open words. So this is a search engine, which looks at 700 million creative works all over the world. Right. This is in what was not slash photos. It is WordPress's own photo directory. So, I mean, you all know of different types of photo sharing sites. Right? Like click, I mean, it's other ones. Like, uh, there's a bunch of them out there, right? Like, you can actually get royalty free photos. So, this is actually a project by the WordPress community. So, this is built all these photos that you see here. You can see a bunch of like photos of flowers and everything. So, there's a, there's a bunch of cool photos. All these pictures are from the WordPress community. Every single picture that you see here is from a WordPress contributor. And you know what the best part is? Literally anyone can do it. This, this, they, they have some guidelines, uh, but if you if you if you have a mobile phone, if you take photos, go for it. You can you can just 
you can just upload it here. So there's a bunch of like, exciting photos and your photo doesn't need to be like picture perfect. If it's if it's decent enough, if it has like if it fits some basic criteria, like in terms of resolution. I mean, any 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 picture that you take with a modern smartphone is enough, is enough to be featured here. So it's a great way to one, have your cool photos, and secondly, like your photos could be used by a bunch of people. So it gets automatically licensed in a Creative Commons license. Again, like Openverse, you will be able to add photos from the photo directly directly to your WordPress site. So right now it has, as you can see, more than 8,000 free photos. And the team wants to hit 10,000. So everybody in this call, here's an open invitation to all of you. Please, please upload photos here. All you need is a WordPress.org account. For our mentees, like we have a we have a dedicated learn obsession on this. But like if you want to jump the gun and go ahead and put your photos, go for it. Yeah. So just wanted to quickly uh, introduce the photo site. I'm very excited about it. I have submitted a few photos. I hope to submit more. Okay, let's talk about WordPress events. So WordPress is a very, very vibrant community. At one point in 2019, we had a we had so there are two types of WordPress events. It's called WordCamps. WordCamps are conferences and WordPress meetups. WordPress meetups are like small city-based events which are held in a city, but WordCamps are more like conferences. So there's a team called the Make WordPress Community Team, which handles these events. We have this site called WordCamp Central, which lists all these WordCamp conferences. So as you can see, there's a bunch of WordPress events literally like all over the world. We have a bunch in Africa, we have one in India, we have a couple of them in the US. So we, we WordCamp Europe just got over, WordCamp Asia was held earlier this year. So you can actually see the picture from WordCamp Asia in this site. So this site, WordCamp Central, that's where like it has all the information about you know, WordCamps. So I think I'll take a, uh, um, you know, um, a, a few moments to quickly talk about what WordPress events and, uh, because like WordPress, the reason why it is so successful is because of the in-person community. We've, we have, we still have a very successful in-person events program. COVID kind of like brought us down. Uh, so, but in 2019, we had 140 of these WordCamps all over the world. And we had around 800 meetups. Even during COVID, a lot of these WordCamps moved online and the meetup, they were organizing events online. So at this point, I will say that we have around more than 700 city-based meetup groups. So whichever city you are in, there's probably a meetup group there. Um, I'm going to share a link which will help you find if you have one. So do attend that one. It's like, it's a great opportunity to meet folks. Uh, I mean, the fact you're actually, in, I mean, if you followed the meetup.com link, you actually followed the WordPress uh, meetup because like Learn WordPress, it's actually hosted in the WordPress meetup.com platform. Um, so WordCamps are bigger events. Uh, th these are conferences that, those which are hosted by um, WordPress folks. Uh, yeah, so these are conferences hosted by uh, WordPress folks. Uh, th those are bigger events. We have a bunch of them coming up. Um, a second. So yeah, this is the site that I spoke of, meetup.com slash pro slash WordPress. Uh, yeah, so um, you, you can see a bunch of events. All over. As you can see, there's like 707 groups. And look at the number of members we have, like 498,000 members. So these are people who work with WordPress in one way or the other. And 107 countries. So this is how big our community is. So just, uh, so you're a part of this huge community and I, I think you all should feel proud about being a part of this amazing community. So, all right. So if anyone here is looking for a job, did you know that we have a dedicated job site called jobs.wordpress.net? So here's where you can actually search for a job or post a job. So it's a dedicated site, dedicated exclusively for WordPress. So it's very active. It has a bunch of jobs posted there. So if anyone here is looking for a job change, or if you want to post a job, do visit this site. Um, now this site, WordPress.org slash showcase, it's going through a revamp right now, what you're seeing is an older version, but it lists the best WordPress sites in the world. So I'm sure like if you use WordPress, people would say, hey, um, tell me like, tell me which some of the, uh, tell me some, the names of some of the most popular WordPress sites in the world. So if you want to do that, just go to this site, which lists some of the top WordPress sites in the world. And you can go there and, and find out what you know the top WordPress sites are. So it's a really cool site. Uh, yeah. So did you did you know? I, I did try to touch, touch on this a bit when I started the session. But did you know that we just completed the twentieth anniversary of WordPress? So this is the micro site that we made to celebrate this. We had a bunch of celebrations. I was part of a local celebration. I think a couple of people in this group already also were part of it. So we're celebrating our twentieth anniversary this year. WordPress is 20, uh, so, and we hope it will be there for the next 20 years. So I just want to share this 
that about this site. If you want to read more about that, it will be great. I want to quickly uh, introduce you to the WordPress Foundation as well. So um, you, you know this WordPress logo, right? This logo, the, Word, the WordPress logo, the name WordPress is actually trademarked uh, by an organization called the WordPress Foundation. So it's a nonprofit. It's a 501c3 nonprofit, which is a US nonprofit. Um, so this uh, organization, it's uh, it, it's Man Malandwick is a is a uh, founder of the is the organization, but like um, it owns the trademark software. So it's a nonprofit, and uh, the the purpose of this organization is it protects the trademarks, and uh, uh, it has some funds. It uses these funds to support WordPress. So um, now WordPress is not directly run by this foundation. It's supported by volunteers all over the world. But this organization holds the uh, holds the trademarks, and the objective of this foundation is to ensure that not one company does not you know take WordPress. So it supports the trademarks, it protects the trademarks. Uh, this is the organization. This is the foundation. Uh, you know that that really makes sure that WordPress is open. That one company or a group of companies cannot take over WordPress. So they uh, they do that amount of good work, and they do a bunch of like uh, nonprofit events as well. They do hackathons um, and uh, so the, the events program that we saw of like WordCamps and WordPress meetups, they come under the WordPress. So that's this is the organization that kind of funds it. So they have a subsidiary called WordPress Community Support PBC. It's not, uh, it's a subsidiary of WordPress Foundation. So the WordPress Community Support PBC, it's it's a public benefit corporation, which so uh, it, it's funded by a bunch of global sponsors like SiteGround and, and Blue, GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc. So, so these people, they, uh, they put some money to the foundation and the foundation uses that money to help volunteers organize events all over the world. So we just had WordCamp Europe, WordCamp US is coming up. So all these events are uh, supported by the WordPress Foundation um, through its subsidiary, WordPress Community Support PBC. You can read about all about it. There's a website. I've, I've not shared the link, but Pooja, if you can paste it in the chat, I'm just going to quickly do that. Um, WordPressFoundation.org. If you want to read about it, here's a link. All right. Um, yeah. So um, we are nearing the end of my slides. Did you know that there's a WordPress book? Yes, there's actually a book on WordPress. Um, uh, so it's called Milestones, the Story of WordPress. I've not shared the link. Let me see. Uh, yeah. I'll, let me see if I can share the link. I'll, I'll find the link and I'll share it with you. So there's actually a WordPress book which is available. Like it's it's a it's a it's an open source GPL license book. If you want to learn the story of WordPress, do check it out. It's you don't need to pay any money to anybody. Like pretty much like GPL itself, it's available. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for sharing the link, Pooja. So this is the first part of the book, My Stones, the Story of WordPress, which covers the first 10 years. So as part of the 20th anniversary, we just released the second part of the book. So this uh this book, the second part, Milestones Volume 2. It uh, it talks about the next twenty years of WordPress. So if you if you want to really learn about you know WordPress, the history, where it's go, where, where what has happened, so you, you might want to check out these books. I, I'm in the process of reading this one actually. It's it's very interesting. So if you if you enjoy WordPress and if you like reading books, I would strongly recommend that you read. I'm I'm like around fifteen percent at this point right now. I hope to finish it in the next few weeks. So yeah. Now. Um, if anybody here is interested in podcasts, WordPress has an official podcast. It's called WP Briefing. So um, you can listen to it using your favorite podcast tool. I've shared the link here. But if you, if you, whatever podcast tool that you use, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever, whichever tool that you, Stitcher, just search for WP Briefing and you can find this podcast. Every month, we have an episode from our executive director. So the latest episode is a Polyglot's WordPress. If you want to access it, just Go to this link and you can listen to it in the web if you don't have access to a tool. It's a great way to you know, stay in touch with uh, where the project is going. Okay, we've seen, um, we've, we've, we saw the different aspects of the, of the project. So I'm, I'm gonna pause for a bit. Uh, I'm gonna quickly take a look at chat. Uh, I, okay, I see a bunch of people who actually shared the issue with the screen sharing. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for actually pointing that out. Sorry about the trouble. Hopefully you can all screen, say this, see the screens now. But I'm gonna pause for a minute. Does anybody have any questions on the project so far? I, I know we spoke of a bunch of stuff because WordPress is really big. You know, it's it's not a small project. It powers 40% of the internet. 
and I, there's still more things that I need to cover, which I have not because of uh, lack of time. But does anybody have any questions at this point? You can also ask anything if you want in chat. Yeah, Anatoly, yes. It's, unfortunately, it's only available in pay. Like, you can actually read it in Kindle. I'm actually reading it in Kindle. Um, uh, so if you have a Kindle or an e-reader or an iPad, you can actually get the PDF or the EPUB version and read it. Hopefully, we'll, we'll be able to release it in print someday. <laughs> All right, so I think we can quickly move on because I know, uh, unfortunately, we took a lot more time than I thought. I won't wrap this up earlier. But anyway, let's quickly see how WordPress gets built. So I'm sure like we've seen how big this open source project is. We've seen multiple parts. So I want to quickly share with you how it gets built. So there's, there's, a, there's a few pieces here. The first one is this site called make.wordpress.org. I mean, I did not share about this earlier, but I just want to quickly share about this. This site that you see, make.wordpress.org, it has a bunch of teams, like this core, this design, this mobile, this accessibility. There's a bunch of teams out there, and um, each of these teams focuses on on a different or on a particular aspect. So, the core team focuses on core. The teams team focuses on teams. There's a training team which Pooja here represents that works on training. So, uh, there's like there's around 23, 22, 24 teams actually, 24 teams at this point which work on different aspects. So each team has its own site like uh i can actually show you the so this is the make.wordpress.org core this is the this is the site this is the subsite it's a so it's actually a blog as you can see it's a blog like uh folks can actually write posts and can actually make comments so all the updates about each project like the co core development happens in the core blog if you want to follow training which is the site which is the team that builds uh, the, uh, the learn wordpress you can go to make wordpress.org such training. This is the team uh, that builds training programs like learn learn.wordpress.org. So similarly, each team has its own site. And we have the make WordPress Slack, I believe many of you are there already. And each team has its own channel. Each team has typically at least one channel. Some teams have multiple channels, but typically each team has at least one channel. So uh, the discussions about the teams happen both in the site and in the Slack. So for, the, for example, the training team, uh, they talk about things in their, uh, uh, their, their uh, they, they try to keep all the discussions in their sites and they also follow along the discussions in their own channels in Slack. So that's how things happen. Now, um, if we talk about the development of WordPress, as in the code level development, it mostly happens using a tool called Track. So Track is a, um, um, it's a version management tool. So WordPress uses well, the WordPress core uses track for most of its development work. But off late, most many teams have been embracing GitHub as well. So there's a bunch of GitHub repositories over here, like with different teams working on different repositories. So the um, Gutenberg, the block editor of WordPress, that's one of the most popular repositories in this. So Gutenberg development happens exclusively here. But other than that, many, many teams like the for instance, the training team. Oh, uh, yeah, Pooja, can you actually share the link of the training team repository in, in, in chat, if you don't mind? Thanks. Uh, so yeah, Already similarly, seen. oh, fantastic. Yeah. Similarly, uh, like, yeah, so different teams have their own repositories over here. So like work on WordPress happens in all these channels. So if you if you want to report an issue with core, or if you want to help build core, you could you can do that using track and GitHub. So this is, these are the places where development happens. So. Talking about this in detail is out of the, the scope of this short one hour session. I just want to introduce you to the whole process. So yeah, this is this is what this is this is track essentially, which we just saw the link to. And this is the official WordPress GitHub repository. Now, while we don't have the time to actually go in detail, I can actually share with you, like using an example. I, I did mention this in the beginning of the session. So the process of how WordPress got XML sitemaps in code. So by sharing this story. You get an idea of how WordPress development works. Now, there's a bunch of things here, and uh, so for for my friends in the mentorship program, you get a chance to actually see this happen, and even others like you know join along in the public channel that we have in Slack. But uh, I'm going to use this as an example, a very short example to be, to explain how uh, WordPress got XML site pass and core, and by by then, by by following that, you can actually see follow the process of how this gets built. So how this started is. This guy, Thierry Mueller, he's a, he's a WordPress code contributor. He works in Google. 
he created a proposal. Uh, I, I can actually share the link to that proposal as well. He, he created, created a proposal. Like he's, he published this in the Make Code blog saying, hey, uh, this would be a cool feature in WordPress code. So previously, I mean, if you if you've been working on WordPress, you know that like there were plugins for this. He actually uh, shared the problem. He shared the proposed solution. He even made like this really cool flow chart and everything. And he shared goals and things like that. Right? This, as you can see in the comments, was a huge hit. Everybody says, yes, let's do this. This is amazing. This is amazing. Some people did share feedback. But like overall, like folks decided, let's go ahead with this. You, know, you can you can see you can see the the, the entirety of comments. So like overall, folks are very positive about it. And you know what they did? They moved ahead. So at this point in code development, I mean, this is something that project leadership also likes folks to do. If you want to build something new, create a feature plugin for it. So uh, what these folks did it once they got once they got the you know the positive sign, they actually sat together. They built this feature as a plugin, and they released this this as a feature plugin. So you you can still see this plugin. Like yeah, this I mean this is the post that announces it, and uh, I think they they've closed this plugin by now. But like yeah, this plugin still exists. You can still find that this is the this is the plugin that these folks worked on. So they published a post announcing the plugin. They put out this plugin. And then they used this to test this feature. They they used to test bugs. And again, uh, all the all the development I mean, for creating this plugin, of course, like uh, they did it on their own. But they put out this plugin and they tracked everything. So what you can see here is uh, all these 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 posts. They are in the Make Core blog, and uh, they have a hashtag. They have a specific hashtag. Uh, XML sitemaps. They, so they use this hashtag to follow all the updates there. So they they follow follow up the discussion on on the former post, which I closed for some reason, they followed up the discussion on this post with this post, and they created a feature plugin. Now, um, by now, it was very clear for folks that, okay, there is, hmm, this is good. There is, uh, like, this, this seems like a good feature to come into code. So how did they arrive at that? Because everybody, so uh, everybody commented on the post. The feedback came in through the posts. That's how they were aware. That's how they were aware of it. So you know what happened? Um, they actually started meetings to talk about this. So weekly meetings in Slack, and and not video calls like like you know chats. So the, um, they uh, yeah they actually created you know uh, a way to kick this off, and uh, they announced meetings and they created a. So since this is a dedicated topic, they decided that. Maybe there's a there's a need for a dedicated Slack channel for this, so they created a dedicated Slack channel to discuss core sitemaps. So this actually can see in the make for Slack, and they kept on meeting, they kept on chatting. Like there was a bunch of discussion. So if you if you're on the make for Slack, search for core sitemaps, you can find this Slack channel. Um, yeah, it's it's probably still around. Yeah, just just I think Pooja's already shared the link inside. Yeah, so. If you follow that channel, you can actually follow along what, what happens, what, what was the discussion. So they kept chatting about it. They kept discussing this. So um, there was a bunch of uh, you know discussion. They, they improved on things. Like so every, every time there's a chat, some folks would raise an issue, some folks would raise a bug that gets fixed. It kept, kept iterated and iterated. So eventually, uh, this got merged. So what they first did is, they had they had their own GitHub repository for this feature plugin, which you can see in this link. They merged that. Uh, they first merged that, and then they raised an issue in the core track, which said, "Hey, uh, this is a ticket to merge this into core." And they they worked together and eventually got merged in the track. And finally, we have the announcement post, which I think I've shared here. Yeah, so we have the announcement post, which says, "Hey, core now has an XML fun uh, sitemap functionality." So this was announced and it was shipped in 5.5. So this is the process. I just want to quickly share about the process of WordPress development. This is general, this is a general way things work in WordPress. So as you can see, a couple of things to note. It, all community members are included in this announcement. So nobody is left out. Anyone can be a part of it. So that's the beauty of this uh, this process. And uh, and yeah, so uh, so for folks in the Contributor working group, you actually get to see uh, this whole process as part of the 6.3 weeks, which is coming up very soon. We just had the beta 4 go out, and uh, we'll be having the release candidates. So, uh, to briefly explain the release process, 
Uh, Pooja, do you want to quickly quickly talk about? Quick, I know we are mostly at the end of time, so, but do you want to quick, very quickly chat about how the release process works because you are on the team, I know. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Like uh, in the release, uh, release coordinator tried to uh, release coordinator uh, create a list of bugs and new features and en enhancements uh, that that is going to be included in the upcoming release. Then that is uh, bug scrubs is going on every week in uh, different time zones. So people will uh, chat about the new issues and um, move forward to the release. And the test team works of um, uh, creating the all the um, issues and the enhancement features are coming into next release. And the they share a um, post regarding the test, what is going to include it in the upcoming release. And the people are joining together to uh, uh, help us in testing, in uh, submitting their code and all. Like it's a collaboration of all people, all the contributors, all the testers and all the, all the people. It, it is basically a release squad working hard behind any WordPress release. Right, right, exactly that. So if you want to learn more about the release process and uh, please join the, there's a contributor mentorship channel in, in our Slack, which is where we are trying to replicate this mentorship program. So, um, which I think, let me see if we can share the link to that in our uh, Slack, just a second. Uh, uh, just a second, 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 copy link. Okay. We have a public channel for a mentorship group. If anybody wants to follow along there, then please join the channel. I mean, for our mentors, you're already there. You need to follow anything. But mentees, sorry. So, uh, but yes. Well, absolutely. I can definitely share my slides, which are public anyway. I will, I will do that, in fact, right away. Let me quickly check if they are public. Yes, they are. I'm going to share this here. In... Yep. I'm, I can also email this to all the attendees. But I think, yes. Yes, exactly. So we'll add all the chat links over there as well. So I think we can wrap up maybe this this time for one or two more questions. I know we there's, there was a lot that was covered. Uh, I mean, you you need a you need at least two hours to talk about all this. And I don't want to take a bunch. I actually wanted to wrap this up earlier, but we took a lot more time than we thought. But uh, does anybody have any questions? Any anything that they'd like to share? All right, so in the case, uh, thank you so much once again for joining. And uh, uh, I hope to do this session at a different time so that folks can uh, join. And we definitely have this recorded, so we'll be sharing the recording later as well. And I hope you all got uh, a very brief idea of how development works in WordPress and the different projects that you have. If there's one thing that I'd like you to take away, use WordPress Playground. It is the coolest tool ever. Like, feel free to use it for testing. It's amazing, just amazing. There's a bunch of things that you can use with it, especially if you play around with WordPress. I'm going to share the link again if anybody missed it. It's playground.wordpress.net. So just Google WordPress Playground, you'll find it. It's a great way to test this out. It's, it's really cool. All right. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day. I'll see you around. Bye. Thank you, Harry. Bye, bye everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.